So, hi everyone. My name is Mariana. I'm a Fedora contributor. I joined the community in 2017, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, on my day job, I am a product owner. Samantro. Uh, hey, I'm Samantro. I work for Fedora QA team specifically. And other than that, I uh, help out with community events and so much more. So, you know, cool. Sumantro, your sound is a little bit low, so maybe you could bump yours up a little bit. Cool. All right. So let us kick this off. Um, I'm going to go through this part quickly. We used to spend more time on this when we first started two years ago, um, but now we've we've done so much that we have more other things to share with you. But really quickly, Let's just talk a little bit about how we got to the community outreach revamp. So um, this is focused on all of the different outreach teams that are in Fedora, specifically the ambassadors. So um, the ambassador program is like a 15 plus year program that had showed like great success for many, many years. Um, but a couple things happened, right? As time went along, the program kind of grew without scaling, there were changes in leadership, there were changes in ways um, in how finances were dealt with, there was a lack of understanding of like how those new processes um, were working and how they came to be, and there was not the best communication about how those changes went about. Um, there was also kind of a feeling of burnout, people were kind of having a lack of new purpose. Um, there was also personal differences, which we see in every open source community, really in every single place ever where there's people. Um, and there was some feelings of, you know, not really being recognized and, 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 you know, what was unsure of the importance of the work. And last but not least, there was a shortage of, of mentors and folks who were willing to be mentors. So I put together a proposal to the community based on, well, inspired by a book that I read called um, Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard, I think. Um, and I was inspired to kind of try to make a change here um, around Fedora's community outreach revamp. So I wrote up a proposal and um, brought it to several groups in Fedora and eventually it got elevated to an objective status. And that's how we brought on Mariana and Sumantro as co-leads, and um, we decided to, to really get into this effort. So um, next slide, Mariana. Yep, it's my turn. So as Marie said, after her proposal, our team was formed and we started taking our first actions uh, towards the revamp. The first thing we do, uh, so we take uh, we have meetings every week and we document everything that we talk about, we discuss uh, the decisions that we make. So we have a list of public notes that you can have a look if you want. Uh, the first thing that we decided to do was a community outreach survey. So we started the revamp, but we wanted to know uh, where the community was standing at that point. So we surveyed um, current community members and we asked them how they contribute, uh, what they feel that is being done good, what wrong, what we could improve, suggestion, etc. Uh, we received a very, uh, some very interesting feedback from that survey. And as I have mentioned in every presentation, what I loved about that survey is that we found out that there are a lot of people who love to self-organize, which means that they do not report back to the mind share or they don't like, they don't write blog posts, etc. So they just, you know, hold events, etc. So there is a lot more of our activity out there than we actually know, which would be great to find out more. Uh, after that, we did the Mindshare team interviews where we interviewed uh, every Mindshare um, team member. We, uh, we obtained the, the status of an objective. We were in a, a non-technical uh, Fedora objective, we still are. <laughs> then we held the, the council um, with the community engagement survey questions. Uh, so we try to apply what we learned from our first survey and um, we added a few more questions so that to the community engagement survey, which is meant to be an annual survey to, to get 
a feeling of how the community is doing. The role handbooks are part of our documentation, which I will talk a little bit later more in detail. So the role handbooks were basically documentation, but we're trying to phrase things a little bit more from the perspective of the person that will read this instead of, you know, ambassadors do this and marketing team does that. So we're trying to kind of phrase it of how would it be to be an ambassador or how would it be to be in, in a certain role within a certain team. Next, uh, so last year, last summer, we had an outreachy uh, intern, design intern. We had Daria. She designed some very beautiful uh, materials for us for the different teams, the different team logos, and some uh, very nice badges that we're still using. Uh, so yeah, I, I mentioned the meeting notes in the beginning, but we are trying uh, to publish monthly uh, community blogs, we blog posts. We have not done that uh, as much as we wanted, but we are having also these presentations quite often. So to share our progress with us, with you. Uh, next slide would be Samantha. So much like this event, we had a lot of other events we represented. So this presentation, literally this exact presentation was made by memory. And we just reiterated this over a long period of time. And this included at presentations at the next 34 news parties that we treat the live, um, the next, the next 21, and upcoming problem as well. Right? And then uh, what we did with this was to gain a bunch of awareness from people, let people know what we were doing, what was our objective, make the vision very clear to the community. And uh, as a result, we got uh, some of the very initial stuff done by community members. And that was, we created a bunch of these things called sprints. And now uh, these were mostly doc sprints, but then we hacked on a lot of um, creating hack MD pages, transferring wiki pages to hack MDs, and then awarding a lot of badges for the first time to a lot of community members and actually helped us do it, right? And then um, that, that was the presence that we had at multiple events where we that, other than our own work sessions that we had. So um, one thing that was very important as we went ahead and as this became objective was to kind of talk about the progress as we go on. And since this is not at all going to ever be a very complete process, we wanted to go very progressive. We wanted to show the growth. We wanted to show the progress as we went on. So first thing first, we went ahead and we formalized what exactly the people at Mindshare would do. And when there's a Mindshare rep to the council, what would be the role of that kind of person? What would they be interested in? We kind of also went down and talked a lot about role handbooks in our internal sessions. And we, I, we understood that uh, Fedora is a very big community. And which means there are a lot of people who do not speak English as their primary language. So we needed this whole handbook so we can multiple languages and we took this five to eight key languages where we wanted to put this whole handbook. So, uh, we kind of also wanted to understand the pulse and the heartbeat of the community. So we kind of proposed this thing as informal surveys and we kept doing these informal surveys where we gathered some idea about what's going on, um, you know, if people are actually aware about what's going on. If they are not, can we give them some context of what's going on? Um, if they are more involved, can we get them to hack sessions with us and get something done? And as a result, we kind of had multiple of these hack sessions, as I said before, and it was very good. Today, as we stand, we have done one ambassador kickoff call, and that was there's a call which we did where we talked about what's the next steps, how we want to make things um, happen. And the way we are progressing with this is we are going to end up completing our role handbooks. As I said, it's a progressive thing. So we're going to complete those. 
it's almost completed. It's just little tiny bits here and there that needs doing. We will complete those, and then there would be translations into those languages that we want to get them into. And that would be where we are heavily community focused, taking values in from community and moving on. So, uh, so the updated documentation currently can be found out in the next slide. And uh, Cool. I can move to the next slide. Um, I did want to point out there that we had one thing wrong on that one. We have not completed the translations. Somehow they were on the left side. They should be on the right side, but we'll get we're getting to it. It's it's in the it's in the queue there. All right, Mariana. Okay, I will continue with the documentation. So the documentation is currently working in progress for us. We have worked uh, for it for, uh, for like, uh, this is our ongoing project for 2022, mostly. We have organized um, two or three hour sprints to get it done. Our main goal was to collect the documentation and bring it in one place for anything uh, community outreach and ambassador related topics or questions that people might have. The way that we did this is that we visited the the old wiki pages we discovered so much information there that some of that was updated some of that could be reused some of that was created um, from scratch from us and we tried to bring that, that in one place uh, where Marie is showing us right now we try to structure this in a way that it can be digestible easily for the readers of this page um, as you can see that there's a lot of information there, but we still call this work in progress. And the reason being that, that we still have not added links or some um, the formatting in some pages may not be consistent to other ones. Or some of them, uh, some of these pages are empty because as someone mentioned uh, in the beginning, we uh, we put together hack and deep, hack and these files uh, in order to be easily um, editable uh, from us. Because when we started putting the documentation actually uh, in production, we realized that uh, updating that would take a little more time. And we have had also help from other community members that are a little bit more uh, experts uh, when it comes to documentation and would complete some of these tasks faster than us. Uh, yeah, we have this very interesting slide template. And yeah, we have tried to cover most of the topics that would, uh, the community would be interested at. Uh, if you had, if you have suggestions, we would be more than happy to hear that. Or if you would like to help us get this done faster, we would be also more than happy to have you there. We're having a spring next week, so yeah. I don't have something else to add here. I'm next, I'm just kind of getting this set back up here. Oops, that's not the, the picture. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So yeah, the docs are looking great. Definitely a work in progress. Um, I I was doing like commits last night. Ripple was doing some PRs this morning. I mean, it's, it's very much actively something we're working on. Um, so the next steps, what, what are the next steps for Fedora ambassadors and Fedora's outreach? Um, it's going to be working on making a schedule for those informal polls, wrapping up our loose ends as far as the documentation. Um, um, but we're continuing to focus on, like, as we finish up the docs, we still have a few more pieces to work out. So we're continuing to focus on the things that really brought us, um, have guided us the whole time, right? Like sustainability, accessibility, empowering individuals to do what they want to do on their own with as little process as possible, um, trying to build in recognition into the different processes and listening to people's feedback as we go along. We're just three people trying to, you know, make it make an effort to improve the situation. But without folks using those processes, using those documentations, like we don't know if they're going to truly work, right? So we definitely want people to jump in there and say, hey, this could be improved. Um, also, we're going to be at different events 
um, in in the upcoming year. I'm sure we'll be at Nest with Fedora. Um, hopefully, maybe if we can make to one of these Fedora hatches, we'll be talking a little bit about it there or just being there as ambassadors ourselves. Um, and also marketing. Uh, we see Edward in the channel talking here about marketing. And this is definitely something we hope more people will pitch in with, right? Like we have all different ways to market. And if you think about ambassadorship with you know, COVID and the pandemic coming into our lives, like digital ambassadorship is absolutely a valid way to do outreach for Fedora. So marketing is totally within that scope. And if you're interested in doing promotion, if you're like a Twitter person, an Instagram person, um, Mastodon person, I know we have like all different places to be, right? So if you're there and you want to talk about Fedora, totally connect with the marketing uh, people and see what kind of resources are available for you. Check out the Comops documentation and see what kind of resources are available for you there. Um, and also we invite ambassadors to kind of get back into some of these things. We're starting to see import person events such as hatches. We have, I think seven or eight proposed hatches all across the world. So if you're an ambassador and you wanna get involved in that, reach out to me, Sumantro Mariana, go to the Flock Pajor repo and just say, hey, I'm interested in being a part of this. Um, and you're welcome to start, you know, other conferences are starting to kick off in person. You're totally welcome to run booths. Um, we also have a weekly Fedora social that anyone interested in Fedora outreach should come and hang out and learn about um, the Fedora community. So I think that is it. We honestly did great right at 20 minutes and we'll have time for some Q and A. So I am going to start at the top here and we'll see how I can do. Keeping a note on the virtual meeting fatigue that people are likely to have, how does the team plan on doing outreach on a more offline basis? So I'll take this one. So our, our goal in the beginning was to actually see uh, what's going, what is going wrong of the people, on the way people do uh, outreach. Our goal was to identify what was wrong and try to fix that and create new documentation and new processes for people and make their life easier on how they can do offline um, at Fedora outreach. So we have put the documentation there. If you're interested in organizing an event in your local area or um, have a university meetup or join another conference uh, and bring Fedora there, have a presentation, etc. So we're trying to bring all these resources and make them available for anybody that wishes to do Fedora outreach uh, outside of the virtual uh, goal, um, world and, you know, have swag, uh, et cetera. I don't know if I answered the question as you have imagined it. All right, let's go on to the next. If there's a follow-up question, we can get to that. Make sure to add it into here. Um, so this person asks, how to become an ambassador for Fedora? That's actually fairly simple. I mean, at this point, there is a very fair process that we have established. Um, we want this thing to be as easy as you can get. So there is a repo where you can go. As we speak, uh, 10 minutes before our session started, there was an email on the ambassador list where someone said he is a digital lawyer and he wants to contribute as an ambassador. So literally, just reach out to the ambassador's list, write you one you are interested. I'm going to have a follow-up to that. There is a meeting next week for <laughs> ambassadors. And please do join, right? Like. You won't just immediately get put into the ambassador group. There is a process there. Um, you know, we want to provide some mentorship and some education about how Fedora works. Um, so there's a little bit to it, right? But you can get involved in the meetings right away. And that's really the way to become an ambassador, right? Like 
to come to the meetings, to be active, and to stick around for you know some extended period of time. Um, so I hope that helps answer that question. Okay, here's another one: How to get more involved in Mindshare, participate. Um, I'm not sure what this word is. Uh, also, share some responsibility. So I can take this one, as I work with Mindshare every day. Um, the way to get involved with Mindshare is to show up to our meetings. Again, um, you can also run to be on the Mindshare committee and the nomination period for F37 or the next cycle is open right now. And we're absolutely looking for more people to run for Mindshare. Um, not everyone really knows or understands what Mindshare does in Fedora. So we have some videos and some blog posts that kind of talk about what Mindshare does. And we do these quarterly reports now that kind of discuss like all the different teams and what the Mindshare committee has been specifically working on. So I'll say this, the Mindshare committee is an elected body, but we have other people joining our meetings all the time. So you're welcome to come give your perspective on whatever we're working on chat about that with us um, and just learn more about how to get involved and ask questions to us specifically. If you're looking for more, you're welcome to run uh, to actually join the committee. So I hope that helps answer your question there. Um, here's the next one. Is your progress shared in the Fedora magazine? I would like to take that question. So, Fedora Magazine is mostly uh, a place where we cover the news, what's happening in the Linux side of things. So Fedora project is very big, like I said before. Um, Fedora Linux is a part of it, yes. And Fedora Magazine covers a lot about what's happening in the distro level of things, which would always mean test case, which would mean uh, things like, um, you know, what's the, what's the gaming status on Twitter, like how does how, how your GPU work and stuff like that. But the progress is usually shared in something called community blog, which is specifically dedicated for such activities. And we regularly try to post our um, updates on community blog, and that gets cross-posted to discussions.fedora.project.org, which is where you can comment on those uh, threads as a part of the thread. And you can comment and share your views on how things are. Cool. Thank you. OK, here's the next question. We are getting through these. All right. Is there any plan to unify the communication channels for the community teams? A newcomer may get lost easily between forums, matrix, IRC, telegram, etc. I could take this one if you want. Okay. So um yes and no. <laughs> I think is the answer. So kind of slowly but surely um no, I'm going to rewind. So Telegram, the, the Fedora community on Telegram kind of grew naturally, right? Like no one in Fedora leadership was like, let's make a Telegram presence. Fedora contributors said, we're on Telegram and this is where we want to chat, right? Um, and it kind of was like the natural split from IRC because, well, IRC is a little bit of an older method of chatting and not everyone understands or cares to learn how to use IRC. So people want apps. They want apps on their phone. They want to be able to look at and go into the app and send emojis and all of that stuff, right? So Telegram kind of naturally happened, right? And so at some point, the Fedora Council slash Mindshare, you know, said, we actually don't like that this is splintering in this way and we want to do it in an open source way. So Matthew and myself took it upon our, ourselves to bring on Element Matrix as an official Fedora platform. That's why you can go there and use your Fedora account login to get into Element. We haven't like discouraged Telegram at all, but since we brought Element on, 
I want to say I've seen at least four Telegram channels that have retired. Um, because we now have Element. You can put Element onto your phone as an application. Now, I'm not a person who is like no, you know, closed source software. I have Telegram on my phone. I've used it for years. And so I don't want anyone to think that we're saying there's anything wrong with being there. You can be there. Um, but slowly but surely, we'd love to see, you know, all Fedorans using Element Matrix. And that is bridge to IRC. So whether you're on the IRC side or you're on the Element Matrix side, you should be getting all of the messages and communications that are there. At one point, there were Telegram bridges as well. Some of them might still be hooked up, but the maintainers behind those bridges have moved on to new things, a lot of them. So you're, you know, slowly but surely, it's kind of going to go downhill unless somebody says, I really want to do this thing, right? So it comes down to people being willing to work on those bridges. There's definitely not an exclusion factor, but there's pieces to it that need regular maintenance. Okay, that one took a while, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. I hope that answered your question and gave some background on like why that is what it is. So someone asked, any dates chosen for the sprint next week? Um, this is something that we've, oh, Mariana, do you wanna go? No, I was going to say that is next Thursday. I will just have to calculate what time is it in UDC. <laughs> okay, cool. But it's, it's around this time, I think. Yeah, actually it is. So yeah, it's around right at 11. So all of our meetings, all of our meetings have been around this time right now, one hour plus, one hour minus, because uh, we tried to choose a time that would best fit for most of the people at most parts of the world. So, yeah, and also the ambassador's call happens around this time. Okay, let's take so. one last question and then we got to get out of the way for the next <laughs> round. The last question, which I want Sumantra to answer, is what experience does Fedora have in outreach at university? Uh, so, yeah, there is a lot of experience that we actually try to provide when we reach out or do outreach at universities. First off, uh, we kind of help more universities get uh, you know, hands on. Now, in India, if I look at it, the percentage of a lot of universities having a technical club and not having an experience is just too much. So, if, you know, we try to bridge that gap. Fedora installer, Fedora um, UI has improved over significantly. So, it's no longer that you have to do a lot of hacks to get augmented with the operating system, it's fairly easy. We have IoT, we have uh, a bunch of those cutting edge technologies as a part of Fedora, which as a university student, you can play around or build your projects on top of. As we say in our vision, uh, mission statement, is Fedora acts as this reference block on top of which you can build almost anything, which means you can take the server, you can take the cloud, you can take the OS, you can take IoT, you can build whatever you want to build. That's how it is. But Mur, there's a last question that somebody asked uh, about being moved to ambassadors and editors. Can we take Yeah, I was just question? going to type it up because we need to get out of the way for the uh, sure, people. Sure. So thank you, Mariana and Sumantro.